Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we welcome your presence, Lord. We're glad that we're aware of it, as others are not, knowing that you are here for a very definite purpose, a purpose that will consummate all other purposes, Lord, as far as this earth is concerned in this particular hour. And the age of humanity, Lord, just waiting to be taken higher into the greater areas that you have reserved, Lord, and yet they're just as good as ours because we know what you're doing, Lord, and we're happy about that. We pray you'll instruct us further in the service tonight. May your word bring us life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now we're on about number 16 of Satan's Eden. And on page 7, Brother Branham is explaining that Antichrist, as in communism, is not what we are to consider or to accept as being antichrist in reality, but it is a deception by Satan in the church and is laid out for us in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. That is that discourse there between the beast and Satan. And you'll notice that on page 7, beginning at the top there, which we could read again, that Brother Branham takes us back to the time of Israel and he makes this statement concerning the Antichrist spirit and how Satan is actually working through religion or the church because remember Israel was not only a nation, Israel was a church. It's called the church in the wilderness and it's also called the ecclesia, the called out because they came out of Egypt. And so he says, look, when Jesus came, see, Satan was in that bunch of Jewish teachers and rabbis and priests telling the people to keep the law of Moses when the very word said that in that day the Son of Man would be revealed. Now, he's speaking, of course, of the book of Isaiah <clears throat> uh, where the prophecy came that Christ would come and open the prison doors and uh, he would... Uh, uh, take out the prisoners that sit in darkness. And, uh, of course, this is the fulfilling, really, of Isaiah 53 based upon a vindicated ministry. And uh, uh, this actually then in, the math, in uh, Luke 4 was the days of the Son of Man. And, of course, the uh, people were not against his miracles and against what he... Uh, did by way of helping them in that particular regard, but they were against his teaching. <clears throat> now, if you look at John the 8th chapter where this is, uh, he has got into a verbal combat with the scribes and the Pharisees, the hierarchy of Israel, which it was the uh, Sadducees, Pharisees, and the Herodians, which he called the ecumenical council of that hour. And in verse 37, he says, I know you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Now watch. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. <clears throat> now, the key there then is how they were actually treating the Word of God and denying the interpretation of the Scripture by way of manifestation. As Brother Branham said he interprets his Word by bringing it to pass. So we're looking then, he's, look, we're looking at this particular thing that Brother Branham says here. Look, when Jesus came, see, Satan was in that bunch of Jewish teachers and rabbis and priests. And remember at the end time, uh, you have a bunch of teachers turned loose again and to lead the people astray, telling them to keep the law of Moses when the word said that in that day the Son of Man would be revealed. See, that he would reveal himself. So they're trying uh, to maintain their old system. And as long as they kept religious and the people religious, that's really all what they wanted to do. <clears throat> so Satan... As Brother Branham said, in so many cases, was trying to get the people to stay with the old message rather than take the freshly killed food or the word that was for the hour. Like he said, when Moses came 
He uh, didn't say, now let's uh, build a boat and we'll just all ferry across the Red Sea. And uh, when Jesus came, he didn't try to take uh, Moses' uh, way of, of bringing the people out. He brought them out through his death and his resurrection. That was an exodus. <clears throat> now, let's keep reading then. Just keep them religious on the law of Moses. See what he did? He was trying to tell them that that part of the word is just exactly right, but this man isn't that person. Now, see how deceiving he is. That is that real day of deception. <clears throat> now, you'll notice he's talking about the hour in which we live and going back to that hour wherein the Son of Man was manifested, that Christ was fulfilling the exact word of that hour, and as I said, manifested or vindicated to be so, and yet they said, no, uh, this is not the hour, and this is not the person. It's all very good, but this isn't it, so what you do, you just take this as a phenomenon. <clears throat> now, listen carefully. Brother Branham said the days of the Son of Man would repeat, according to Luke 17, 30, and according to Matthew chapter 4, when Christ would do in the form of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> back on earth here to the Gentiles, which he's obligated to do because the Scripture said so, do in the, do in the Spirit what he did back there in the flesh. And we see it perfectly in Matthew 12, where in the Scripture distinctly said <clears throat> that he shall not raise his voice, he shall not be contentious, and, uh, and these be loud or boisterous, <clears throat> and yet Jesus was in the days of his flesh, but in this hour coming unobtrusively in what the world looked at as merely a great healing revival, they never understood the presence. And you've got the same thing in those people that say they believe this message, and I don't want to keep harping on it, but I'm going to keep telling you until you smarten up and understand that people who say they believe the presence don't believe like this church. Now, I don't know how you believe, but they don't believe like I believe because to them it's simply a doctrine. And they accuse us of majoring on a minor. If that is a minor, I'd like to see them produce a major, those liars. And the truth isn't in them. Now you say, well, Brother Vail, you're fighting it. You mind your business, no, I'll mind mine. I'm going to fight. I tell you one thing, there's nothing worth believing you can't fight for. It. That's why I'd take Jane Fawn down and send her, send her off to Hanoi or someplace. That's exactly where the church is, a Jane Fonda. That's right, a typical prostitute sold out to the devil. And America gives her Emmys and Oscars. Well, that's America for you. And they're going to produce the Antichrist too. I really believe America will produce the Pope that's the Antichrist. I, don't, I can't prove it, but according to chapter 13, it certainly does look like it because that's America. <clears throat> now he said, see how deceiving that was. He said that was the real day of deception. Now he's talking about the present. It has been and now is. See, he's talking about the present. Satan establishes a kingdom in the earth. He wants to establish his own kingdom, no watch, as a businessman that is not a Christian. In other words, he wants to become a whole hog, and he doesn't care how he becomes whole hog. It doesn't bother him at all. He will work a, a businessman that isn't a Christian or hasn't any ethics like the devil. He'll work every scheme he can to make you see something <clears throat> the wrong way. Vest your stock and something's wrong, everything else. If he has got a purpose and a personal gain in making you do that, and, and remember the souls in the church became merchandise in that, under the, the, the third seal, making you see it that way, he'll show you everything he can and keep you off from the truth of it because he's got a feeling only for himself. Now that's what the Bible says at the end time. There, it, <clears throat> uh, it's going to repeat as it did in Romans. They're going to hold the truth in unrighteousness. They're going to make it an unrighteous thing. They're going to make it a, uh, <clears throat> like you're a heretic because you dare to worship opposite. 
no matter how much this businessman cheats and lies, whatever more, he's got a personal gain. He, he wants to get you where he can use you and satisfy himself no matter what. This is why, this is, that is why Satan has done this. And he has worked through the ministry to do it as God promised he would. <clears throat> now, the scripture tells us distinctly there'll be prophets and people prophesy and they'll, they'll, their prophecies are correct. They'll cast out devils like Judas, all of those things. In the last days of the days of the Son of Man, it'll all be there just the same as it was with Judas and the other eleven and so on <clears throat> doing these things. And in 2 Corinthians, Paul warns us that these, uh, if, if Satan is a minister of light, then how much more will his own disciples be ministers of light? And Peter warns us, and then Paul warns us in 2 Timothy, right down the line, you are told that absolutely the devil will do anything and everything in order to bring the people in <clears throat> and to hold them uh, whichever way he can. He's just telling them any kind of a lie, promise them anything, doesn't matter to him at all. Now, he began by religious deceit and Eden and has continued ever since. Now, that's a key right there that people don't want to believe. They think the Antichrist is out to annihilate. He is not out to annihilate. That is a lie. Satan didn't look at Jesus and say, now look, at if you're really the son of man, I'm going to get you, buddy. And when I'm through with you, you ain't going to be nothing. I'll burn up your body and soul in hell. I'm just going to take you right over. He never said he's going to annihilate him. He said, he said, listen, let's get together. And between the two of us, we'll bamboozle everybody. We'll take over earth. We'll take over kingdoms. We'll take over God. Communism was out to annihilate. So you see, in the garden, Satan was not out to annihilate. He was not out to destroy as people think he was out to destroy. That's the stupidest thing in all the world is trying to destroy and stamp out something. Eventually, the people, their blood will cry out until somebody rises up. Stupidest thing Israel ever did was to crucify Christ. You don't, you don't make things work that way. God will annihilate eventually when he wants the whole thing taken care of. Leave them. But he said, leave the tares grow with the wheat. And that's the principle. If you annihilate, what are you going to rule over? <clears throat> so you see here he's saying, now look, I, I want to take you over. That's exactly what he wanted to do, to take over Adam and Eve, to take over the world. He tried it with Christ. And the closest he's going to get is when he comes into Antichrist in a big religious deceit because the Bible categorically says it is a principle of cooperation, a fellowship, and a worship. Now, you can do what you want, but that's what the Bible said. And if you don't believe that, why do you read your Bible? You see, when I say things like that, you understand I'm poking, kicking a poke at fundamental concepts which are pure, unadulterated hogwash. They're not even tricky lies, although people are tricked, they are stupid lies. But that's the way the ball bounces, the cookie crumbles. <clears throat> now, he began by religious deceit in Eden and has continued ever since. He involved God. He involved the Word of God. He lied. He did an excellent job. He took him right over. Now, if it worked then, it'll work now. Because we're a whole lot dumber and a whole lot needier than they were back there. They had the world by the tail. We have defiled the earth until the earth has got us by the tail. And the whole thing is a morass, like a great big seething boil. It's like the black plague. When the boil breaks and it's on your fingers, you'll die from it. It's a religious deceit, and it has continued ever since. If it worked then, you think he's going to change his tactics? He's not stupid. 
not by setting up a bunch of communists. Communists have nothing to do with this. It is the church that we're, you have to watch. It's not the communists that will deceive the very elected. Now, Brother Branham, there's a little slip of the tongue here. <clears throat> the very elected don't get deceived. It's the, what, what comes on earth that all but the very elected get deceived? It's not the communists. <clears throat> it is the church that will deceive all but the very elect. It isn't communists. We know they deny God. They're antichrist. Sure, they are in principle. But they are not the Antichrist. In other words, they're not that kind of Antichrist. The Antichrist is religious, very religious, and can quote scripture. <clears throat> now, for the first time, isn't it strange, but the socialistic, communistic countries can now begin to qualify as Antichrist because they're swinging back to religion. <clears throat> not before. Before it was like the Christians and the Arabs and the Crusaders. One annihilate the other fella. And there was a religious war. But now you got where the Gorbachev said, well, he said, I was christened. My grandmother, my mother took me to church and christened me. Boy, that makes old Stalin roll over in his grave. <clears throat> well, that's, I'm glad they think he's rolling over. You're just rolling close to the fire all the time because, you know, what can you say? He was raised up for that. <clears throat> I didn't say he was. You say, yes, you are. Well, come on, you deaf, dumb, and blind. Who got raised up when those 200,000 horsemen got loosed at the river Euphrates? Who killed the people? What spirit of hell took over Stalin? Babylon. Persia. Greece, Rome, you don't kid yourself. But it's just plain as the nose on your face, and everybody's got pretty good-sized noses. I mean, I'm looking around a bit. <clears throat> Not judging, because mine's pretty good, too. Well, listen, we know they deny God. They're Antichrist, sure, in principle, but they're not the Antichrist. The Antichrist religious, very religious, and, and can quote the Scripture, make it look so plain, as Satan did back there in the beginning. He quoted everything right down. God said, what God said, uh, thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden. She said, yes, we may eat of the trees of the garden, but the tree in the midst of the garden, uh, that God said we're not to eat of it, not even touch it, because the day we did, that's the day we would die. So he entered into a religious discussion. <clears throat> now, let's understand something. Uh, in the day they ate, they died. They didn't live to be a thousand years old. Now, on the day of, of the Lord, they're going to die again. But this time, it is not simply a physical death, though the physical death is there. With this physical death comes a spiritual death, and the white throne merely opens the books and said, this is why. That's all. <clears throat> now, that's why the books are open today in telling us what's going on here. Okay. He said, oh, surely you'll not die, but let me give you the reason why God said this. Now, he quoted, what he quoted was the truth, you see. He said, it will open your eyes and will make you know good and evil. Brother Branham used the word wrong there, which is true, but it's good and evil, really, according to Scripture, which, is, which I just changed it on purpose. <clears throat> uh, so you don't, you know, Get it looking up the word wrong when it says evil. You'll be like, it is God, wrong. You'll be like God then if you can do it. Now watch, he's enticing them. He is enticing them. Now remember, he enticed Jesus. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Temptation itself is not bad. <clears throat> it's what you do with it. It's what decision you make. So he's enticing them that they will get a reward. Now, what will the enticement be of the Antichrist? Without a doubt, solving the financial problems. Now, you know, as sure as you sit here, gold is stupid. You could have a pile of gold, you could have a mountain of gold, but if you don't have food, you don't have water, eat your gold. Now, I heard of a girl called Rapunzel who could take straw, wasn't that right, and weave it into gold? 
but I never heard of Rapunzel or her nephew or anybody weaving gold into bread. Kind of stupid, isn't it? Ridiculous, but people are sold on gold. They are sold on a medium of exchange. And the Catholics have the gold. And if you don't think they have the gold, visit their big basilicas and you'll find tons and tons and tons of gold. <clears throat> Literally thousands of tons of gold. And all they've got to do is shoot the price up. 2,000, 10,000, 20,000 bucks an ounce. Now America had it all at one time, right in New York and Fort Knox. And all she had to do before she lost her cool, became thoroughly stupid under people like Roosevelt and Harry Hopkins and the Morgenthaus and all the rest of them, she should have said, we got the gold, it's gonna, it's, we suddenly raised the prices to 10,000 bucks an ounce. She could have run the whole world economy, not had one cent of debt. And you say, that's stupid. Yes, it is stupid. But it works. You know what? Because people want it to work. And God wants the people to want it to work. And he will make the system work for a little while. Because there's nothing will touch your heart more than your own stomach. There's a saying, a man, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. The way to anybody's heart is through the stomach. Now, let me tell you something. Not enough of you people tonight went through the Great Depression as heavy as I did. Now, some of you are sitting here and you know something about it. <clears throat> and you saw at that time they had mountains of wheat and no money. That was a whole curse. And Roosevelt said, I'm going to do something about it. Money was tight. The food sat there. Little kids starved. And food under their noses. But the day's coming when you're going to have to distribute food very carefully. You're going to have a system where you can't buy and sell or do anything else because it's very vital to the economy of the world. And believe me, the people will not sit back and the church will not sit back and allow a depression to come again where there's food and everything else and people cannot get it. They will do it. The Catholic priests and the Protestant preachers have been in the forefront to lead the people. Now, well, come on. Religion. <clears throat> Religion. Religion. If you want to send a care parcel to India that would really benefit the people from this church and say, we got lovely brethren over there, we'll put $3,000 in care packages. There's no way you can get it to them. You've got to go through the Catholic church. The Catholics are recognized as a real moral people. I don't know they're any more moral than the Protestants. A lady phoned me tonight, and she said, you leave Ella? I said, yes. Well, she told me where she's from, and she said, Carolinas. She would have a...